as well. This is just a quick update, some things that I've picked up from what's going on in the world of rotary steerables. Uh, we've heard of the, the new Sonage Neo Steer, uh, closed loop uh, rotary steerable systems. This is, uh, this is, I've been watching this from the beginning, and this really is the first really kind of radical, different thing for, for steering the well. Uh, what they've basically done is they've moved the pistons so close to the drill but, uh, that it's really, really uh, increased the build rate, and it's also increased the responsiveness of the tool. They keep a very, very tight tolerance on the automated part of this, so they've enhanced their ability to to steer exactly to the line. At least that's what they're marketing. And so um, they've been having uh, fairly good runs in the Northeast, and I think a lot of folks know the Northeast is a fun, easier place to go and try new technology. It's a lot more forgiving. Uh, they have had a few runs in the Permian. Uh, they are targeting this at the higher end uh, uh, well designs, high, high dog leg well designs. The CL stands for the curve and lateral, and CL, I said close loop early, but it's curve and lateral. So they are promoting the fact that you could drill uh, a, a curve and just keep going all the way to TD, and it'll give you the high dog leg in the curve that you need and the very tight tolerance on the lateral portion of the well as well. And in the X, uh, adds extreme to that nomenclature where you will see from the picture that the uh, uh, well I'll show you the picture in just a second. The, the interesting thing about this and the, the one of the wonderful things Slumberge has enjoyed over the many many years of their ro rotor steerable uh, system evolution is that the, the electronics are shared in all of their systems so it's very very efficient for them from a from a, a cost of ownership standpoint. So <clears throat> it's showing you the two tools, the CL, where you can see there's actually a break between the bit cutting structure and the pistons themselves, and the CLX, which is pretty much a unibody. It is a one piece cutting structure with pistons all incorporated in one. Um, and you do get higher dog legs by moving those pistons that much closer. I think I have a you can see from this where there's there's a clear break right here where the cutting head, if you will, can be separated from the rest of this so you could replace it. But that does create additional uh, separation from the point of contact and the cutting structure. And with the CLX, they just move those pistons that much closer and increase the uh, build rate capability you know, even further. Uh, another evolution is the Orbit tool. Uh, they are now marketing the G2. And I just talked to Toby with Extreme this morning and they are also having uh, um, access to the G2 on the Extreme rental side. So, um, and I think <clears throat> these are the two biggest things is the improved pads and, and axes for higher RPM. And then the interesting thing for, for my, I was particularly interested in this little uh, cutting element that's been added to the kickers or these pads that are first to make contact with the borehole preceding where the piston or the pad is actually going to extend. And that's just a little bit of a, of a trimming element to make sure that there are no um, minor little perturbations of the borehole wall so that they're ensuring the maximum amount of clearance around that tool at all times so that it lets the pistons extend as far as possible. And so it's, it's kind of like the same thing that you would see with a, a dog sub being run behind a drill bit to try to straighten out the borehole immediately behind the cutting structure. And that's the best place to do it. If you can't get the drill bit to drill dead straight, then if you want to try to fix that, the best place to do that is as fast as you can get it right behind, as close to the drill bit as possible. And that's exactly what they're doing there. Um, and, and interesting enough, I mean, they are saying that this is, uh, uh, you know, improving dog leg capability with this system uh, and also helping, you know, a little bit with borehole clock. Uh, the eye crews from Halliburton, uh, we probably picked up on some of these things already, but they're continuing to promote these same features and, and 
capabilities. They have three sets of inks and mags uh, for multiple surveying measurements. Uh, that does improve their uh, uh, ellipse of uncertainty coming out of these tools. And uh, it also allows them to uh, steer the tool in combination with the super high speed uh, acquisition of the sensors <coughs> in the tool. They also have high speed acquisition of the tool's health measurements. The, the sensors are, are monitoring how the tool is performing very rapidly as well. And then they are promoting this digital twin at the surface. So they actually have a simulator that replicates this tool on a computer and they can sort of drill the well on the computer with this tool in, in the environment as best they can describe it and, and make sure that the tool is actually going to work well. And a lot of that I think has to do with the fact that they manipulate the flex collar behind this tool. They use different levels of flexing depending on what dog leg they are trying to get out of the tool. And so to be able to model that effectively, I believe that's a, a big part of what this digital twin is doing for them. Um, and in the logic system, they're also promoting that you know, they've done it in Azer uh, Azerbaijan, I believe, where uh, they have a surface computer, they put the well plan into the surface computer, and they just hit go. And basically the surface computer takes the MWD sense, uh, surveys coming back, feeds those surveys into the software, uh, does a trajectory analysis, does the comparison from actual to plan, and makes the decision of what to tell the rotary steerable to do next and automatically downlinks that command with no human in that loop. So that's closed loop, but closed loop all the way back to the surface. It's not closed loop down hole. The tool doesn't know what depth it's at. It's, it's still taking commands from the surface, but the surface part is automated. And <clears throat> that's the natural evolution. And honestly, we, we did this 20 years ago with the GeoPilot and Compass software, but nobody wanted to pay for it. So, but you know, our, this is, so there's marketing embedded in this as well, but it does sound pretty cool. And they've got a, a record run they claim, or two runs for this well in Permian, 15,000 feet drilled uh, successfully. I don't know if that's their own personal record. I think they've been, longer laterals drilled in the Permian. But uh, nevertheless, some other headlines, uh, maybe some of you saw this, Terabici has been sold by H&P to a firm called Cinco, an international uh, service company. <coughs> and uh, they are uh, really pouring in some engineering expertise into this design and, and spending some money, which is something that HP might've been a little bit reluctant to to, to do much, but these guys are really trying to take this tool and make it uh, better. They are incorporating uh, an MWD system to it. I don't know if y'all are familiar with the Teravici tool, but it was designed from the beginning to accept a tensor type plug-in from a tensor style MWD system. And they built it that way so that it could be used by anyone with their own MWD system. Well, now they're gonna actually put the MWD in it. Uh, talk to the guys at Scientific. They've said they've made some significant reliability upgrades over the last six to 12 months and seeing a lot better uh, success with that system. They did struggle in the Permian you know, when they first got it out there, which most people do. Uh, DTEC talked to uh, Lane about this and they are deploying their new four and three quarter inch uh, Gen 2 and uh, they are seeing greatly improved performance. It has higher yield because they have gone from having uh, two pistons in one pocket to <coughs> each piston being in its own pocket to where they don't even have a pocket anymore. They just screw the piston straight into the tool and it opens up the amount of uh, surface area underneath for the, for the fluid to act against. So there's more, uh, more pressure against the back of each one of their pistons and mm -hmm. that has helped the tool to increase its, its output. You. So they're seeing good success with that, and they are now selling tools as well as renting them. So they're going into the um, into the uh, direct sale uh, environment, and of course that does imply a level of service that's going to have to come along with that to get the companies up to speed with being able to run this tool for themselves. Uh, we already talked about the G2 a little bit, and the Java Data Well Guide. Uh, 
that was not included in Intrepid's acquisition of Java Data's directional drilling business. So I'm not sure where that tool is going to end up, um, but um, um, that's that's the news, and that's that's what I know. Actually, I know more than that, but I can't tell you. <laughs> Uh, so uh, the other emerging you trends. Had to say that, but yeah, you just had to say. Let's drop that bomb. Yeah, I did. However, from I'm all that. Nice. I'm all that special. Uh, just a few other things. Uh, some of y'all may already have caught on to this, but uh, major service companies. I've been hearing some reports from some of the companies who aren't major service companies that their competitors, the big guys, are giving away services. So just to hold on to the business at the expense of some of the discrete uh, tool providers. And uh, I mean, I've literally heard where the rotary steer bowl was free. Uh, I've heard that the lost and hole was dropped to $100,000 and just really extreme leverage being applied by some of the big guys uh, and really hurt some of the smaller, more uh, discrete or independent uh, tool providers. And also, we already talked about this, but the remote drilling, remote directional drilling is growing, but it's growing faster than it normally would have because COVID-14 is just forcing it. And, uh, but what's really coming out of this, though, is that the relationship of those support people with the people on the rig is still vitally important. And the guy might not be on the rig all the time, but some of these companies are trying to make sure their real-time support guys are rotating through the field to actually go and meet face to face so that at least when they're back in the, in the control room, back in the office, making calls out and saying, I'd like to help you uh, advise you on this situation. They know they can trust this guy. They've met him. And so him or her, excuse me. But um, so really this is, this is encouraging because it does again, enhance, uh, bring back to, to our attention, how important that human, still is that relationship is still very important and uh, and that's it i'd love to hear from any of you because i'm always teaching this rotor steerable class and so if you've got any sort of you know news from the street that you'd like to share i'd love to to hear that 